Ain't no sunshine when she's gone It's not warm when she's away Look what happened. It snowed. Hmm. And it's really not that cold, which is kind of weird. The great outdoors. All right, so there's only one thing to do when it snows. You have to do it, because until you do it, um, according to the When It Snows Act of 1981, unless you make a snowman, it isn't winter yet. So let's get to work. Wonder. Boom. Snowman made. It's a beautiful snowman. Look at that. Just look at him. Good job. I'm freezing. My hands are in so much pain. But winter has officially begun. Huzzah! I've made a full recovery. Hot chocolate has a way of doing that. Mm. Oh, still too hot. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. And she's always gone too long. Anytime she goes away. So the GoPro that's been going for a month is a little snowy. But no snow on the lens, and it's still running. Wonder this time where she's gone. Wonder if she's gone today. Ain't no sunshine, she's gone. I just hope you make it so cool. Anytime she goes away. Hi, welcome to Vlog Vlog 3. So this vlog is a complimentary set of ideas to its partner, a blog post on stevemorocco.com. If you're not watching this video on that blog post page, just there's a link down here, you can click it, and you should do that, or else. Cool? Cool. You're here. You made it. All the way to adulthood, or nearly there. Almost, if you're a student. You know, like any moment now. If you're still in school, it's fine. Don't give up now. That is not what it's about. And I think that that is what frustrates me most about, about adults, just in general, myself included. At some point, I finally got the freedom that I spent my entire childhood dreaming about. And then I promptly just forgot what to do with it. <laughs> so that's something I try very hard to guard against. This is a video about how I'm trying my best to have fun by running around in a field like an idiot and yelling at you every day. Not that specifically every day. All while balancing responsibilities, caring effectively for people who are important to me, I hate how my voice sounds when I'm yelling like this, I'm sorry. And living a fulfilling life on a daily basis. I think those are super important things. And so this is a video about those things. I hope you enjoy it. Hey there, so uh, ignore the shirt. What I wanna do is tell you what I'm up to. And what I need to do is give you a little backstory to get there in a way that makes sense without any context, because I want people who know me well to benefit from this, and I want people who don't know me at all to be able to understand what's up. Uh, so the full story in a not boring way. That's the theory. I'm gonna try in this vlog to do that. I hope you enjoy watching it. Uh, let's roll. Hey Steph, where are we going? Fashion store. First things, first things, first things, first things, first. I was raised in Colorado Springs, Colorado. I went to a Montessori school, like, for early years. Then I was homeschooled for just a second, just long enough to, like, make me weird. And then I went to Colorado Springs Christian School from sixth grade all the way through the end of high school. I was really big into computers. Um, my high school offered several computer classes, all of which I took. Uh, and then I was pretty sure I was gonna get a computer science degree up until the day I shadowed my dad at HP during one of the darker years in his career. Uh, and instead of like the fun, thriving office I loved hanging out at as a kid, I saw this super dreary, depressed small group of engineers and a lot of empty cubes 
and they had just laid off thousands of people and I was like, all right, I don't never want to do this. So as you do when you're 18, I decided I would pursue photography, which was my favorite hobby at the time. That actually went really well. Uh, I went to art school and I spent art school grappling with the apparent pointlessness of art from an engineering like mindset. Why art? It doesn't make any sense. Uh, and I got to explore fascinating concepts like how human values interact with computers through video games or, uh, you know, how, why artist statements carry any weight or have any value, <laughs> as well as the opportunity to really grapple with my faith. Being raised in a Christian high school, I think, actually presented an opportunity that not a lot of high school kids get, and that was to be philosophically active from a very young age. Um, <laughs> Sorry, putting it in that terminology sounds silly. But uh, for real, when you think about why you believe what you believe at such a young age, it really gets your gears turning. And then in college, when I had the opportunity to defend that faith and sort of reason for myself outside of the structure that was provided for me by Christian school, that was uh, an enormously um, beneficial experience as well from an intellectual standpoint. Um, so not only was being raised in a Christian school super helpful intellectually. Uh, leaving Christian school and going to art school was also super helpful intellectually in that these gave me the tools to determine what circular reasoning looks like and uh, reason from first principles and, uh, you know, have a, a rational argument um, and, and understand sort of the assumptions that are implied in whatever line of reasoning you happen to subscribe to. Reasoning from first principles is extraordinarily valuable if you want to do something that works. Printing ticket, please wait. The way she Renewal says that. Thank you, continue into lot. Is so silly. Now that the prop work is done to make the scene more interesting, let me tell you why we're here. Um, a very exciting thing is about to happen. We're about to find someone very cute inside the airport. Uh, at least that's the plan. Bum, 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 bum. Parking garage wars. Don't go. Yeah. I'm winning the parking garage wars. I have extras in my vlog today. Real travelers packing real things. All right, the parking uh, section of this vlog is done. Look at that cool airport. It's a cool airport. Now, let's find ourselves in Ansley. Try not to get run over by buses or business people. All right, so if I'm careful about this, I should be able to sneak up and get a slow motion video of her reaction. Who knows? <laughs> Hi. Hi. How are you? Ah. <laughs> ah. Ah. I found it. Please hurt so much. I'm smiling. Do you hear the whale? Yeah. Missouri, Mr. John Missouri. Oh. I heard it's gonna snow tonight. It should. We'll see. <laughs> like taking videos all the time. Yeah. Vlogger Steve. Yeah, this is what vlogger Steve looks like. It went from taking pictures all the time. Vlogger Steve, who just takes videos of literally everything. This I'm will go sorry. On my vlog. Oh, it's so <laughs> Ow. I'm sorry. You only can see that coming. Here's what that shot looked like. Just here. Oh. I'm sorry, Hansel. I'm not about to say that for your vlog. It's too embarrassing. What? What did you want to play? Just nothing. Forget it. It's just stuck in my head, okay? Get out! Uh, oh. Oh, there we go. Edit card. Processing. Thank you. Amount authorized. Press button for receipt. So, that said, the first principles I started reasoning from were, I like being human, I am, by choice or not, a representative of the human species, uh, and I should probably do things that make lives for humans better, because I enjoy being human, and I think other people deserve to as well. Uh, so with that foundation in place, I wanted to look at how can I make life 
uh, as a human better for as many people as possible. Um, and there were a couple options that came to mind. The most obvious conclusion, and keep in mind the Occupy movement was going on as I was making these decisions. So I, I said, uh, well, a lot of people would like to do a lot of things to help other people. Many of them don't have the resources to do that. There's this group called the 1% who seem to have a ton of the resources. They must be doing something differently. Um, either they inherited <laughs> what they have or they're doing something dramatically differently from what other people are doing with their same 24 hours a day. So as it turns out, a small percentage of the 1% have inherited their wealth, uh, but a surprisingly large percentage of the 1% created it, created their wealth. And so I began the journey into, uh, what does that look like? What does the 1% look like? How do you get there? Why can't you? Uh, and that began a journey that ended uh, two years later in Hong Kong whereby I had uh, learned a ton about investing and I learned a lot about online marketing and about you know all of these different ways that people get extraordinarily, extraordinarily wealthy. Um, and also learned about the difference in like uh, living uh, expenses all over the world and discovered while I was in Hong Kong that if I wanted to live on a beach in an apartment for the rest of my life, party nonstop uh, and make as much money as I needed to, that is something that was an option at the end of college. Uh, and being presented with that option was very helpful for clarifying what I actually wanted out of life. Because I feel like a lot of people work toward that goal. And so finally realizing that like, oh, this goal is like a couple months and a few decisions away from actually happening for me. Now do I actually want it was very helpful because I feel like I could have gone down that path for a long time if I hadn't arrived at that moment early in my life. Um, so I, when I was in Hong Kong and was making the decision, you know, do I travel and continue this like freelance situation or do I go and reconnect with people who are most important to me in my life and uh, make my life something that I will enjoy looking back on. Uh, that was a decision and distinction that I came across uh, at a really fortunate time, I got to travel back to Savannah, Georgia and watch all of my good friends graduate from college. I had graduated early. And then I came back here to live with my family in Colorado and spend quality time with them while everyone here is in good health. And my mom has just retired and my dad works from home. And uh, I'm getting to spend time like helping them explore and meet their goals and uh, spending quality time with them on a daily basis. And all the while working on goals that have very little to do with making a ton of money, while that is one aspect of the goal, is no longer the main goal. I had that opportunity, I passed it up because I saw that it wouldn't be as fulfilling as I initially assumed. I came back to live a life that's a little more like, I know that if I died today, I wouldn't have any regrets. There was, there's nothing that like, if I won the lottery, would change uh, about how I'm living my day-to-day -day life. Uh, and so those are the things that became very important to me. Um, over the course of the last year and a half. So with all that said, what I am working on today is, okay, let's take a break. <laughs> Incredible. I got it. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, hold it. Okay, go. Okay, explain the bunny thing. Oh, there's like a little pie and you can see the way it's there and then you can see that they are hopping like this. It's so cute. 
Hey, quiet. Okay. And then... <laughs> oh! Oh, cool! That's nice. Like that. They're so cute. Now, where's the bun? <sighs> so I used to get really frustrated that there are powerful people who don't solve the world's problems. And then I realized that I am one of those people. And that realization has informed a lot of my decisions. Since then, I've been on a mission to make my life one of service to the greater good. Sorry for my glasses, you don't get to see my eyes in this part, just poker face. So as long as I'm serving, and as long as I have the luxury of choosing what things I'd like to, to do to serve others, because some people don't have a choice, I'd really like to be having fun as well. So I'm trying my best to come up with ways to make the world better and have fun along the way because that is the incredible opportunity I have. There are some rules you just like have to follow and some responsibilities you just have to attend to. Everyone has that. But there's every other little moment of the day. Everyone has all those other moments of the day. We all just have 24 hours. And what you do with those little moments says a lot about how much you still value life and how amazed you are at the opportunity you have. You're here. You get to do this all on your own or with as many friends as you want to invite. Does that blow your mind? It blows my mind. Now, I don't know if you've asked yourself this yet, but I would ask me this if I were telling me, oh, I don't know where I was going with that. But anyway, um, maybe you've thought to yourself, why such big goals, Steve? Why aren't you just happy where you're at? And I mean, I am, I, am, I am happy where I'm at. I just think that, well, there's a reason for really big goals. Uh, I think they're easier than the alternative. I, th I think it's just more pleasant to have bigger goals. So long as you're not like emotionally attached to whether or not you succeed, having bigger goals just makes things easier in general. So let me elaborate on that a little bit. A lot of people go into the things they try with the mindset they're like, hey, probably not gonna work out anyway, so I'll just do this for now. Like that sort of thing. And then they end up getting somewhere that they've worked toward, thinking all along like, I shouldn't really try anything serious because that probably won't work. And, and they end up somewhere where they, they got what they wanted, they, got, they worked, and they arrived where they were headed. And so I, I realized that it's very important to get your direction set on purpose early on. All of this is essentially a game. It's true. I mean, either, like you have this set of parameters and rules and, and uh, you get to sort of play around in those rules. You're going to get whatever it is you put time into trying to get. And so I wanted to make sure that the goals I set my sights on would be astounding if I actually succeeded. Related to that point, um, because so many people set out to do things they're not like completely serious about, there is a huge amount of competition for like second best in the world. Like a, a huge amount. Like the number of people applying for entry level jobs or following the natural path for their career, like that's everyone. And the number of people who are like starting at the top, reaching for the top, is like mm, almost none. And so if you if you just give up on the usual path and you just skip to the end, um, it works, which is surprising. Like if you just go straight to the top and talk to the people there, in most cases that works. Like whether it's talking to CEOs or chancellors or the president or whatever it is, or whether it's starting a company and you know, beginning at the top and building, building the company underneath you rather than trying to join a company and work your way up. Like it's just, like it's just as much work, if not easier, because the competition is not there. Um, whereas if you want to apply for an entry level job at the hottest, Google or Apple, like you are competing with everyone, the smartest people in the world, all of them. <laughs> and that's not a game I could win. It's not a game I'm interested in playing. So this is a cool alternative. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. I know that um, all this is for me in the end. And like, I wanna make something that I'm not only proud of watching and not completely embarrassed by like I have been by previous vlogs, but also that is useful 
for other people. So we'll see. <laughs> Those are the goals. We'll see if we can hit them. Uh, and I'll have fun along the way. Thank you guys for watching, as always. And uh, I'll see you around. Well, so this is my mirror on which I keep just every important memory. <laughs> I think it's pretty silly. Uh, yeah. Don't look at that for too long. It's super embarrassing. <laughs> Okay, when I started teaching, no one had landed on the moon. There were no space shuttles, no CNN, no weather satellites. There were no video cassette recorders, no CDs, and no computers. The world has changed in a million ways. That is why I have always tried to teach children that some, something that would be useful no matter what. So many things have gone out of date, but after all these years, words are still important. Words are needed by everyone. Words are used to think with, to write with, to dream with, to, pray, to play with, to hope with, to pray with. And that's why I love the dictionary, it endures. So I wanna add a little context for that. A cool thing happened recently that I'm excited to end this video with. A friend just popped out of nowhere and asked me for my address. She gave me this book called Frindle. She just sent it to me and she said, uh, this reminds me of you and I'd ne never read it before. So as I was editing pictures one night, Ansley read it to me. And it turned out to be one of the most inspiring and wonderful stories about challenging the status quo. It was a little boy who just made up a new word, Frindle, for the word pen and all his friends got into it, and it took off, and it was huge. It's all about seeing the world change around him in response to his ideas. And I'm so incredibly flattered that, like, someone is reminded of me reading that. Now wasn't I right, Nicholas? All this will mean so much more to you since you learned about it on your own. Miss Granger was beaming at him. Nick sank lower in his chair. This was where I Thanks, started Anna. writing. That's where I'm at trying to make my corner of the universe a little bit better along the way. I hope this answers any questions you had or didn't have about what I'm doing, or at least why I'm doing it. I look forward to diving into like details about individual projects. I hope this was interesting for you. I hope we get to collaborate on making the world more awesome together. Until next time.